There was hundreds of rappers there that day. There were hundreds of CEOs there that day. But out of all of these 400 rappers that were rapping and everybody doing this, exchanging numbers and, and connecting dots, for some reason, this one piece that I found ended up being a major piece to what I was trying to achieve. Um, putting it in the proper context in terms of this game right here, I made a decision to invest my own money into this artist, the game, and bring him back to San Francisco and start spending money on studio time, on pictures, on video cameras, and just capturing the moment, not knowing what the future holds, because no man knows what tomorrow brings. Well, in chess, I learned a few plays from my grandfather, and they was called the three man, or what is it, the three, the three move checkmate, that's what it's called, the three move checkmate, where you can move a couple of pieces, and if the person you're playing is not hip to those particular plays, it's an automatic checkmate. Well, in making that move, it was kind of like an automatic checkmate for me, because I was able to secure a contract, secure taking the pictures, secure videotaping, and secure recording 40 songs, which ended up being very valuable when Dr. Dre and 50 Cent finally came to pick this man up. When they put him on TV, that made the stock options and what I had go through the roof because I found him first and I had all the evidence to prove that I was the true founder, that they didn't give me credit for it, I still had to work for mine for the world to know that this is somebody that I found. But I was just happy that I seen something before those at the top seen it. And it allowed me to win, it allowed my family to win, it allowed San Francisco to get some credit for being a hip hop place where artists can come. And it also gave me more credibility as finding new stars. So the three main, the three moves, checkmate move is something that I would tie to being the person when you're independent. You have to try something before the next person tries it. You have to believe in what you're doing before the next person does because they won't believe in you. You have to believe in yourself. And if you believe it in yourself, by the time they come get you, whether that's a record label, whether that's a new job or a position that you're going for, you have to be doing something to show the people that's on top already that you worth that. So by the time they come, you can negotiate in your favor. So that's how I would tie, you know, a move that I had to deal with in real life to the chess game. Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is D. Labrie. Um, I'm an artist from the Bay Area. I'm originally from Oakland, but I've lived in different parts of the Bay. I've done a lot of different things around the Bay, just kind of learned the area and learned all the resources. And um, through all that, wanting to be a, a hip hop artist at a young age, I, um, I also got involved at a young age working in youth programs, and I think that's one of the things that saved me just having mentors, going to community centers, after school programs, just that little bit of extra attention pulled, pulled me in the right direction. And um, over time, I got involved as I got older working with youth, and I always tried to figure out ways to bring my love for hip hop into education and what I was doing in, in the youth, with the youth. So um, that, that basically is how I ended up doing Hip Hop Congress, and what we do in Hip Hop Congress is build networks. So how that relates to me, to chess, um, like when I play chess, I play Adisa a lot. And a lot of times we talk about who we are as people when we play each other and we notice characteristics about ourselves. And um, one of the things about me, I have, I have half brothers and sisters, but I grew up as an only child. So not having it pops around, it, it made me like, I would say it made me go into my own mind more but at the same time, it made it difficult for me to work with teams sometimes. So I had to learn that over time. So I got a song called Life Strategies, and it's all about chess. And one of the lines I say, do you know what your team can do when you sacrifice four pawns to kill off two? And that, for me, relates to how I do music. It relates to how I do Hip Hop Congress and bringing hip hop and education together because, like, what they, what, I, what they started calling me over, over the years was Mr. Network. 
because I, I network, I work with different people, and in life sometimes you might you might have a certain skill, but for instance, like you can't you got you need your teachers, you need your activists, you need your art culture, you need the people who run the buses and who build the buses and who you know create the, the books and you need all the people that play a part in, in society to come together for you to do anything at any point. So when you look at this board, each move has its own move. So that's how you form networks and that's how you form like allegiances with people that can help you push what you're doing and at the same time you you giving them something to what they're doing. So that's what that's what we do. We build we put the teachers together with the hip hop artists, with the activists, with the people that's that's like the, the teachers have a job to do here with you all, but at the same time, when you get into like higher level colleges, everybody don't get into those colleges. So what we do is we bring these colleges and we say, yo, let's build a hip hop program here. And then we allow that to be resources for youth that want to come through and, and learn things on this level. And at the same time, we bring those people from the schools and, from, and that's doing the work in the communities into the neighborhoods to speak, like Adisa, like JT, to come talk, talk about these issues and bring them all together, and we do this in different regions. So that's how I look at the chessboard. It's like a big map, and you got somebody over here that's the fisherman, and over here you got the newswoman, and then over here you got the hip-hop artist, and then over here you got the, the person who, who goes out and you know guards the troops. And you bring them all together and you got a movement and you got strength. So everybody, when you in one class, you good at one class, help the next person in their class. They might be good at science, you might be good at English. But together y'all can make a business or make a movement or change something in your community. So it ain't all, always about doing it yourself. You need a whole team and you know what I'm saying? You plan it out and you got, you got things mapped out so people can help each other. So that's what I would say. You know, what D D was talking about teamwork, uh, my friend Guy and I, when we were on our way here, you know, my father's from the Mission District, and, um, you know, I was raised on all the burritos on 25th in Mission. Since I was a child, my grandmother used to always take me there. So, me and my man Guy, we went over there today, and even when I was in high school, we used to go over there and eat all the time. And I was like, man, do you realize how long we've been coming to this burrito spot and eating and chilling? And, I mean, you know, we was kids, now I got kids, you got kids, we got families, and that's how it is. And you know, he said, you know, it's really funny how over time, a lot of your success will depend on who's on your team. You know, I've known a lot of people through my life, but guy has always been there since, since I was like 13. And I started looking at these pieces and thinking about the chessboard and like, you as an individual can sit on either side of the board and you win, but you win with that team. And if your team is out of sync, you ain't gonna win. If your team is out of sync, you will fall victim to stuff that you shouldn't fall victim to. If your pieces aren't doing their job in protecting that king, that king is gonna fall. One of the best things that you can do right now is look around you and figure out who's really on your team. Not just who you think is on your team. Not just who you want on your team. Because sometimes the people you want on your team, they're not going to be there for you. Sometimes a family member isn't feeling what you're trying to do with your life. Sometimes a best friend, he might love you to death, but he don't think you can do that. He don't think you're going to get into college. Other partner don't think you're gonna be a decent rapper. This other person thinks trying to be an oceanographer is corny or whatever. So what I wanna know is how do you identify the people on your team? Like what makes you know, okay, this is someone I wanna bring in? What are, the, what are the personal traits that you look for in building your team? And also how do you show yourself to be a team member as you move forward? Well, I would say I'm from, uh, I'm from Harlem, New York. But I, I was born there. I was born in the Hospital Militar de Lima in Peru, um, South America. I'm Peruvian and black. I came over here when I was very young. 